I feel so great to be back at Dollywood. It's always great to be here. My favorite park of all, even without lightning rod. Now this is an unusual one. I actually do not have a season pass this time. I'm doing a couple daily tickets. And the reason why I'm doing it that way is because of my Silver Dollar City season pass to get half off. So one day ticket with taxes and fees and everything is around $103. So that's about what I'll pay for the two days in total. But if you do it that way, take the trolley. It's $3 for an all day pass on the trolley. And you get to park at Patriot Park for free. And for three bucks, you just take the trolley. No $25 parking charge. Other than that, if you get the season pass, make sure you get the one that has the free parking because at $25 a day, that higher level pass is gonna pay for itself. It was super cold yesterday. That's why I did Anakista. And I came over here just to torture myself. That's another reason why I'm only doing a couple of days here at Dollywood this year without lightning rod. A couple days should be enough. And I love all the other rides here and I love the shows, especially at Christmas time. So I can easily fill a couple of days with all that but it'll be difficult being here and not being able to ride this. But for now, park's about to officially open in five minutes. Gotta get set up to head over in for Big Bear Mountain. It was a little late in opening because of the cold weather, but they got it up now. In the meantime, I had been riding Wild Eagle three times in a row and I did the drop tower. Well, there's the Dragonflyer entrance. And this is where we were walled off last time I was here. So it's not too far away from Dragonflyer's entrance. Time to get my new credit. A weekday school day, no wait. Two train ops. I was able to get on real quick. Got the second row and then second to the back. And this ride is awesome. It might be a family coaster, but this is better than a whole lot of high thrill coasters. Between the theming, the onboard audio, interactions like that. You go behind a waterfall, you go under the pathway, there is airtime. It may not be anything world class, but you get some minor floater pops throughout the layout. I've heard people say that there's no airtime on this. That's not true. There is airtime. It's just not the greatest airtime in the history of the planet, but it is there. It's got some good positive forces. It is perfectly smooth. A lot of people are complaining about that they're wanting the trees to grow back in, that it's too clear out there. All right, fair enough, but honestly, it doesn't really take anything away from the ride. That'll just add to it whenever the trees come in. This is one I could see riding all day long. It is so good. I'm tempted to say this is better than Hagrid. I always said as far as family coasters go that Ghost Rider is my favorite family coaster. Now I say that a little bit tongue in cheek. I know it's not a family coaster, but I have to throw some shade on it any chance I get. But as far as true family coasters, Hagrid's has been my favorite, but I think Big Bear Mountain is better. That first launch is just to kind of get you started. That second launch is where you really start picking up the speed. Now, a lot of people are big Haggard fans. A lot of people are big Harry Potter fans, and I am too, but I don't know. There's something about this ride that I like a little more. I don't know if it's the way that it's paced that you just, you just keep going the entire time. Haggard's is a long ride, but you have those stops. Well, you have the one stop mainly. That does lead to the awesome drop track. But that drop track is really the only airtime moment on Hagrid. There's lots of airtime on this. 
So it's a tough call. I've been interested to see how the Thunderhead is riding now. I've heard great things about it. We'll see. I always liked the Thunderhead before. I'll see if I like the Thunderhead better now. And yes, that was the best it's ever ridden for me. That's moving back up my list. I had it. I think I had it ahead of Mystic Timbers and Kentucky Rumbler. Then I moved it way down when it didn't ride as well. But now I'm thinking it's moving back up. I don't know if I put it ahead of Mystic Timbers or not, but it's in that company. 2019, it was a bit rough. So kind of held it down in my rankings. And in 2020, the rides were phenomenal. So I moved it way up. Let's see, 2021 and 2022, it was rough again, which is why I've held it down. A lot of people said that a lot of track work's been done on this. And I would agree with that, that it's riding as great as ever. That first pull out there is a bit rough. It's not that bad though, but it's noticeable. Because of temperatures, Fire Chaser Express was late in opening. It has to be 40 degrees for it to run. Which, officially we were at that, but it might be colder back here. Unfortunately, I will not get a ride on Tennessee Tornado this year. Maintenance issues, don't know how long that's been going on. Now hurry, I'll be January before Alright. There. How's that? A little lower. There. How's that? Oh, Dad. And I softly listened as I stood upon the Blazing Fury, as usual, better than fire in the hole. <laughs> Temperature's dropping fast, so gotta get on Dragonflyer and Big Bear Mountain before they have to close for the temperatures. Fortunately, Thunderhead can operate down to 34. So I'm saving it until Big Bear Mountain and Dragonflyer can no longer run. Oh, Tennessee Tornado open. Wow, okay. I'll have to get back there before the end of the night. So I finish off my day with two rides on Thunderhead. The last ride of the night's going out now. Seven rides on Thunderhead, seven on Big Bear Mountain, five on Wild Eagle, three each on Dragonflyer, Mystery Mine, and Fire Tracer Express, and one on Tennessee Tornado. I thought I wasn't gonna get any on it, so I was happy with the one. And once again, a fantastic day here at Dollywood, even without lightning rod. I still only visited during Smoky Mountain Christmas. I don't know if the rest of the year is just as good, but the Christmas time here, just nothing can top it. Nothing at any park, any time of year can top Dollywood at Christmas time. Even if Lightning Rod's not open for you. Everybody, where y'all get off at up here? This is where you will come back to to go back to pay 
So that'll do it from this visit to Dollywood. Looking forward to November when I'll be back. Now tomorrow heading to Fun Spot Atlanta, hoping to get on Air Force One. We'll see if the weather cooperates.